Thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko, and if at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. It's youth and politics. And uh, joining me in studio, I'm joined to my extreme right, Kennedy Odweo. He's a political analyst and uh, governance expert. Karibu sana, Ken. Asante sana. I'm also joined, as always, you started with him. He is also joining me in this particular conversation. I'm joined by Kiragu Muridi. He is a CEO of Vijana Mbele Foundation. Karibu sana, Kiragu. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, this particular conversation today is all about uh, the uh, you know, uh, Ruto Raila tough wars. It is Raila versus Ruto. Some were telling me it should not be Raila versus Ruto, but Ruto versus Raila. And I wonder which is which. <laughs> you pick pick your your, your battles. <laughs> which is which? Uh, remember, the deputy president William Bruto has asked Honorable Raila Odinga to apologize to Kenyans. Now speaking on Sunday, while attending a church service at the Presbyterian Church of Eastern Africa uh, in Umoja, the DP said the Big Four agenda would have uh, created jobs for the youth, but uh, Honorable Raila Odinga could, uh, uh, you know, came in to disrupt the big four agenda hence this uh, particular agenda could not succeed is this true well on the other hand Borella Odinga accused the DP on Saturday of being corrupt and blames him for grossly inflating prices of the SGR by 106 billion Kenyan shillings and uh, I quote according to Raila Odinga he says and I quote Ethiopia has over 700 kilometers of rail which is cheaper compared to our own which is only about 400 kilometers end of quote do you think this is true the hashtag as always is one in the morning at ram maguko and at y254 channel between honorable raila odinga and honorable william bruto who is your pick well according to honorable raila odinga he asks the donations that the dp makes to churches where is that money coming from well <laughs> that is a conversation. Remember, we are broadcasting live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Ensure that you head over there and for continue this, following this conversation as we proceed. Let me start with you, Ken. If you look at this particular conversation, the way, you know, it, it, it's all about Ruto Raila, uh, you know, the, the face of over the uh, issue of craft. And that is what made the front page of the People Daily this particular morning. What's your take? Thank you so much, Ram. It's a good pleasure to always be here and have these conversations. Hmm. My take is that Ruto and Raila are two sides of the same coin. And that's where, as a person, I believe we should look at the third side of the coin, hmm. which is the rolling side. Ordinarily, we've always known the coin has two sides, but there's the rolling side that can make a very big difference sometimes. Hmm. So, as a people, and I always advise young people because I'm also contesting for a parliamentary seat in Butula constituency in 2022. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm mobilizing young people away from these normal games that we are used to, to, the, to, be, to being played on us. Mm. Because you look at Raila and Ruto, you look at what they are saying. When Raila says that Ruto is responsible for the inflation of this yes, year, yeah. mm. Raila is a very close friend politically and functionally of the president. The president controls the state machinery that can arrest any criminal, regardless of his position. The other day we saw the court, the high court, saying that the president, the, there are things that the president did in regard to things like BBI that can make him criminally liable. We have systems that are under the control of the executive. If the honorable, the right honorable Raila Odinga was serious that William Ruto, the deputy president, inflated this jar by 1.6 billion. Do you think Dr. William Ruto will still be the deputy president, considering the circumstances we are operating in? So there are two sides of the same coin? Two sides of the same Should coin. Should we get another coin? We've grown, we've grown in a society where, mm. and I, I use examples, like for example, mm. in 2017, mm -hmm. we had Mike Sonko versus Evans Kidero. In Kiambu, we had Ka William Kabogo versus Waititu. These guys have put us in a corner to a level where they only create Two, they present a scenario where they, are, they purport to have two alternatives, but both alternatives represent them. So in a situation where mm. you are at a point where wh whomever you elect, they eliminate the, the perfect alternatives and then they remain with their, so you, you, with their options. You would not pick either of the two? I will not pick either of the two. 
at this moment, and my advice to Kenyans is, we've been in a situation where we've been doing the same thing, the same way, and expecting different results. We are politically insane as Kenyans. So we need to get out of that madness and organize ourselves around a viable alternative. And that's where we need to rethink our strategies. Because these are people who are in government, these are people who have been in government for the past, their entire lives. And, 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 and true to your word, they have been in government, they have been leaders, they have been in power, yet they have delivered in many things that they promised to do. They have done a, a lot. Yet you say at the same, same time, there are two sides of the same, same coin. Kirago, do you agree with him? Well, Ram, I think this is, is the issue of politics, the blame games and the scaffolds, mm. the his, has, the this, that. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Raila coming out and saying that Ruto is, uh, is involved in the, in the problems within the SGR scandal, this is mere uh, propaganda. And as I said earlier, Raila is a very good, uh, is very good in uh, attacking, uh, attacking strategies. And I think uh, he's a very good uh, pro 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 in propaganda also. Uh, also, I, I can remember also my good friend, uh, senior counsel, uh, uh, Ahmed Nasir, uh, referred to, in a legal case, referred to Raila Odinga uh, as the Raila Doctrine, in which elections cannot be fair, uh, cannot be fair unless Raila is, is declared the winner. So Raila has been, as usual, has been in this case of uh, pro using propaganda as his political strategy uh, to get out of the basket. So you, you, of the basket. you subscribe to the notion of the deputy president when he, see, he, he asks Honorable Raila Odinga to apologize to Kenyans. You also feel like he should apologize I for think letting down the big for agenda it's a win-win uh, situation considering both of them have served in government they have as you said they have delivered they have done their parts so in, in a case of a scenario where they have been involved in scandals this is up to them they must eat a humble pie then come back to kenyans uh, mm. uh, and ask for forgiveness and maybe if they want to run office but they can they can continue why, why should he apologize to kenya at, at, at the end of the day because as you said Politics is a, a, a game of, um, of uh, blaze. it's a blame game. You're running for uh, a seat come 2022. Yeah. I'm sure you've blamed, some, you, you, you've blamed your opponent for not delivering in a particular way or the other. Yeah, so sure. Have, so I have it too, uh, you're running. I believe you're running for which seat in 2022? MP Kipipiri. Kipipiri. Kipipiri, yeah. member of parliament. Yeah. And yours is uh, Butula, constituency member of member parliament. Of parliament. Yeah. Haven't you blamed your opponents over one issue or the other, just as these particular individuals are also doing? I think uh, there's a point I was an activist, and I was a very radical activist, where I used to blame everyone except myself. That's where most Kenyans are. You've not blamed your opponent for anything? I, lonely, I blame my opponent. And as a person, I usually say I'm not competing, I'm just trying to get better. So I don't mm. have an opponent. Uh -huh. As a person, I believe as an office holder, you have a duty to undertake. When I come out to say that you spend 110 shillings, like it is, a, this, I saw something going around, someone buying a brick that is supposed to cost 20 shillings, 110 shillings, and you buy five times the price, and that you undercut the budget for other projects, that's not blaming anyone. And that's why I need Kenyans to move from this propagandistic and populistic way of politicking and become issue-based. Focus on content. And that's why I want people not... I wish Kenyans would stop listening to what, what these people are saying. Because the truth is, these people are just playing with the minds of Kenyans like they have been all alone. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we need Kenyans as a people to rise to a level where we can see the value in the not and not the value in the not. We don't need... To, we, we, we've already gotten used to that level where what says sales. We need to race beyond what we are being told mm -hmm. and get to a point where we can look at these people and be able to associate. Yes, you say they have achieved, they have done things. Yeah, we appreciate what they have done within their comfortable abilities. Mm -hmm. But now, how do we at this position, how do we move from here to the next level? We can't move to the next level if we are still thinking the same way. We can't become extraordinary by remaining ordinary. At this point, as Kenyans, we need to analyze these people critically and ask ourselves, yes, we have achieved this as a country. Is that the best we deserve? No. Why? Did these people contribute? Yes. If they did, how different should we do it? And until we get to a point where we take that power and become the power that determines what happens, we will still be played. 
Well, Rama, I think uh, Kenyans, as usual, have, become, have been uh, to the norm of uh, uh, what we call ret retrospective voting, in that they vote in con cog cognizant of the uh, what the candidate has done in the past. And I think that is a, a bad stature of politi the political situation in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenyans should adopt a prospective vote in which they support a new person, a new figure in the, in the political scene that will bring in uh, and, uh, new ideas that will shape uh, the economic structure, uh, the government uh, and uh, future and pros progressive government to come. So we, we need uh, uh, someone new in the in, in this seat. In, in that the political scene. Well, um, the deputy president was uh, saying yesterday after the church service at uh, Umoja, and uh, he alluded to the fact that he helped Honorable Raila Odinga become prime minister. And I quote: He said that Nataka no ulize wa wa kusema ukweli. Mbona mnalalamika sa hili wengine wanapata kusaidika? Now he helped Raila Odinga become prime minister. And now he says that they are complaining when he wants to become president. Your thoughts? Well, I think William Ruto is also a very good, smart politician. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a political animal. He's a tactical politician. Uh, the issue of blame games. Ah. Uh, I, I, yeah, history has it. William Ruto has been a kingmaker. He made uh, the the former prime minister, the prime minister in the in the 2010 government. Uh, and I think uh, this is just mere politics that got yes, tanks wag waggling. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So we must understand the situation that these two horses are uh, trying as much as uh, as they can mm. to to reach to the to the end in 2022 now that ronald's prime minister should another now be given time to become president remember you remember the allegations of uh, young kumi <laughs> yes young kumi yako kumi eh. or are we talking about ruto making raila prime minister and Uru president those the, 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 those are two two particular issues that uh, have been affiliated to, to 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 the dp remember we had the issue of uh, you know uh, people complaining many analysts saying that yes the there, there was a promise that after uh, the 10 years of, of President Uru Kenyatta, we would have another 10 for the Deputy President. And now we have yet another issue where Honorable Ruto is saying that I made Honorable Odinga become who he is. Now that it's my turn, why are they complaining? On the young Kumi, Yako, Yake Kumi, what if the President meant, because at the end of the day they came into government at the same time, because as the, the president was doing his 10, the deputy was also doing 10. I'm just <laughs> trying to imagine. And then on the issue of, because at the end of the day, this guy did not go home. He enjoyed the benefits <laughs> concurrently. And then on yeah. the issue of, of the power that the deputy has, ex the political power, you can take away everything from the right honorable Raila, but you can never take away his history mm -hmm. as far as our country growth and prosperity is concerned mm -hmm. you can take away everything from the deputy president but you can never take away his energy determination focus to his goals mm -hmm. so that is something that kenyans must internalize and mm -hmm. understand well mm -hmm. okay the dactari the deputy president did not entirely make the right honorable the prime minister then but you cannot take away his contribution he participated, and we all remember he even the conversation. Him. He supported mm -hmm. and mobilized. He's a wonderful mobilizer. He the only person, uh -huh. the only person who can challenge Raila in terms of political mobilization today, is the deputy president. In twenty, in twenty thirteen and twenty seventeen, there are people who will rubbish and say, "Oh, the system, uh, the the Mount Kenya vote." But you can't take away the fact that the the deputy president mobilized, and you can't take away his contribution. If the deputy president had not partnered with with the, the president. Any any reasonable analyst will tell you that it could have been a very difficult. There's a probability that the president would not have become president. So mm -hmm. you cannot take away his contribution. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end of the day, he there were accrued benefits that he gained singularly, mm -hmm. even when he made the right honorable the right honorable. When he made Uhuru Kenyatta the president. The, the, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, the president, he has enjoyed benefits of operating alongside. So it cannot be entirely 
uh, his, said that he has not benefit and therefore he, uh, he, he, he that should should warrant everyone else stopping the horse for for his to pass. And uh, I, I'm looking at what the deputy president said. He said that the elections will be held on the second of Tuesday, uh, the second Tuesday of August next year, as is required by the constitution. Don't listen to those who want the poll postponed. Those are just cold threats. You know, how is that going to pan out in your perspective that they, these particular elections of uh, 2022, remember we have had the conversation about whether it's viable, even legal, uh, legally? Well, I think uh, the constitution, it is enshrined in the constitution that uh, uh, the term limit of the president, uh, the member of parliament, should end uh, in the second Tuesday of August. Mm. And should the government, or rather the parliament, exceed by even one hour, it will be a constitutional crisis mm. in Kenya. So I think... Uh, we should carry out the elections as uh, as planned. As planned. Uh, the issues of uh, BBI, you know, BBI is, is the issue that is going to bring a backlog to the elections, and I think BBI is not uh, an issue to, to to that is of need of interest of people at the moment. We have uh, an economy that is already down on its knees, and uh, we need to move forward. So let let us first carry out the elections as planned. Then the amendments can come later. Mm -hmm. Now, you're taking regards to this, that the, the, uh, he insists it will take place as planned. I think I want to start by telling Kenyans that sometimes we, we over very serious matters. Because there are people who go on television and you will imagine they are comedians. When someone, there is someone who said that election, if there is no BBI, there will be new elections. No elections. That is very comical. And I think that is something that Kenyans should disregard with total, with total... Uh, so at the end of the day, on the issue of the elections and the deputy president, I personally believe, common sensually, and even by law, there are situations that can cause the postponement of an election. That is in law, and that is common sense. If we are in war, if there is a serious pandemic. So at the end of the day, as per the constitution, an election is supposed to be held after every five years. Mm -hmm. But in the event that there is a situation or a circumstance that forces us that justifies the postponement their constitutional mechanisms mm -hmm. i think and i and that's why i think i would like to defer with with Morita a bit because at the end of the day things are not cast in stone we, and uh it cannot be that because it's written it must always happen and i also disagree with the deputy president when he says elections must be held because now there's no difference between him who is saying elections must be held and the other one who at only really who is saying bbi must pass you know we are a democracy and democracy is about people having conversations. We want to do this, but there can always be a better way. I so at the end of the day, it cannot be, yes, we want to have elections, that's how it's supposed to be. But what if something happens? Mm -hmm. What if COVID blows out of proportion to a point where even some of us who've taken the jobs are no longer safe to? So at the end of the day, we need to always have that, to operate in an open environment with, with, where, with where we entertain possibilities, to a level where we can accept that there can be differences. But as long as whatever changes come are for the people, not for a few people to sit down like you are discussing about people who sit down and decide. And it was very shaming when you're doing the, the newspaper analysis when you say that Kalonzo admitted that some people sat down and made him the deputy president. For someone to admit that way and then still be coming and telling us he wants to be president, that's very shameful. So at the end of the day, we can postpone elections if it's in the interest of all the Kenyans. But it's not for two people, three people, five people to sit down and think they have more power than 50 million Kenyans and determine that. Now, that will not accept. I want us to, 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 to bring it to a close uh, on, on, on this uh, particular note here. If elected, we have two people who have made a particular comments. One, Honorable Raila Odinga. Two, Honorable Musala Mudavadi. Honorable Raila Odinga says that if elected, he will ensure that he uh, fights corruption and uh, he will jail corrupt people. If elected. On the other hand, Honorable Musala Mudavadi says, and I quote, that if God grants me the opportunity to be leader of, to be the leader of this country, I will lower the taxes. And one way that he will do that is through the fight against corruption. Kirago, your thoughts in regards to this? I think uh, Musalia Mudavadi, one thing that uh, attributes him is uh, his uh, 
humble character. He's a very humble leader. Mm -hmm. And also he has been very uh, sen sentimental on uh, matters involving our economy yeah. as Kenya. He keeps on saying that we should do something uh, to cushion Kenyans, especially during these times of COVID-19. He keeps talking about the taxes. He keeps looking at the future of our economic uh, structure of the country. So, and looking uh, at the history of Mudavadi, mm. once he was the finance minister of Kenya in the year 1995, and I remember he was described as a, as a minister who improved the physical uh, economic uh, situation of of Kenya during that times, and also he also in some aspect. Uh, contributed to the improvement of the Kibaki e e economic uh, structure of government. Uh, I think Mudavadi, if given a chance, Mudavadi has a future for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. He has hope for Kenyans. Uh, and I think if he g he's given a chance, he's probably going to walk us out of the mud uh, economically. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. already now, Kenyans, we, we, we are already in an economic uh, Backyard that is too low uh, to be to be in a third world country, and I think if he is given a chance, he's good to walk us out of the mud. We have a Mudavadi supporter, <laughs> 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 so you vouch for him. I vouch for him. Lowering taxes, he will manage to do that. Yeah, through the fight against corruption. Sure. How do I? If elected, if memory serves me right. The right honorable had the majority in the during the coalition government. But I think most of the highlights of what we picked was the Nusumkeka issues and stuff like that. If I was the right honorable prime minister during the coalition government, mm -hmm. I would have used my numbers the way Jubilee has used its numbers progressively. Because the right honorable Ray Lodinga is considered a progressive ideologue. He's he's considered to understand. When he talks of fighting corruption, that's one example. He had he had the numbers, he never used them to make to make the radical changes that he's been demonstrating over. Two, he wants to fight corruption. They had an issue with the the, the Kirinyaga governor over corruption. The governor had even sued him. They finished it in a gentleman versus lady agreement. The question is, there was a court case which court cleared the person she had accused of corruption that now warranted the, that arrangement and forgiveness. Because at the end of the day, we have a situation where, as a person, I believe leadership is not about positions. And when I go to Butula constituency, I tell people, don't allow anyone to come here and tell you they will do this when they become elected. Yes, I may not construct a road because I do not have the authority and the vote head to go to Kera and lobby for, for, for funds to construct a road in Butula constituency because most of them fall under that category. But there is this small empowerment. When you talk about people are talking about the bottom up economy, the bottom up economy is about organizing people at the ground level, organizing them and formalizing those organizations so which that when you, which invest, you when you invest, that's what I'm doing. Hmm. I'm organizing people at the grassroots and then relating with them at their normal levels of life so that when we talk empowerment, we talk the small things that they can relate with and grow from. So at the end of the day, when people like Mudavadi say they lower taxes, mm. Mudavadi is a party leader. Taxes are being increased. I've never seen his party take a position. And taking a position is not about, as a leader, once you have a vote, you have a position, you have a privileged position, use that position to advance that what you believe in under whatever circumstances. The, the, but, but the party has taken a position in regards to the issue of taxes. He's the one who has taken a position, a populistic ap approach. And that's why he say there are these people who choreograph their laziness under the guise of being cool and mature. No, he comes out and talks very nicely about to appeal to the people. That is part of politics because there are two categories of leaders. There are those who lead by compliance and there are those who lead by revolt. So he's this guy who is the, the bureaucratic civil servant who leads by compliance. He wants to look like he's good and stuff like that. Mm. But in real sense, where the road, the rubber meets the, the road, he mm. never makes an effect. Because at the end of the day, we ha when we talk about taxes, we are talking about things like borrowing, we are talking about things like the debt ceiling, we are talking about things like corruption. You cannot be talking to the media. Legislation is not done in the media. I do not have a position. I may not legislate in parliament. That's why I talk on media. I write about in newspapers. But once you have a vote, you utilize it where it matters. 
if Mudaba Musalia Mudaba was serious about taxes, that is what ANC would be doing in parliament. If Raila Odinga was serious about corruption, that is what ODM would be doing. ODM would not be shutting its door to COVID billionaires and saying we allow, we allow the system. If the system is not working, we change the system. All right. I'd like to bring this conversation to a close here. And uh, based on what you're saying is uh, you do not support either of the two. Uh, you, 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 we're talking about Honorable Raila Odinga or Honorable William Ruto. Uh, you support uh, the sentiments of the of, of the deputy president, if, if, if I'm not wrong. Correct. Sure. And uh, just wrap it up, just to bring it to a close, in just 30 seconds. Um, what do you see this country heading to in regards to the issue of taxation? There have been sentiments, including on what Honorable Johnson Sakaja said, the Senator of Nairobi, that he does not believe that increasing taxes brings in money into uh, the Treasury. Instead, he believes that we should have a reduction in taxes so that, you know, uh, 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 and, and that is what will enable money to come in um, through the incentives and everything that shall be, you know, uh, accrued after the, the reduction. That increasing money cannot be the solution. In regards to, to that, what is your take? Well, uh, Ram, I think uh, Kenya has, uh, has, has, has a bad, has has a bad history of uh, economic uh, situation. Mm. We, are, we have an economy that is already down on its knees. And I think the government, uh, and even the government that is going to come 2022, in, in, into, into place 2022, their first uh, state of business should be how should we uh, ensure that the economic situation uh, of the country is good for the common Mwananchi. You know, at the moment, we only have a situation, we have the situation in Kenya where mm. only uh, a, an aristo aristocracy, economic uh, class of people accumulate wealth at the, at the top, where the, the people, the common mananchi are drowning in poverty in the backyard. Mm. So we must uh, bring an economic uh, situation where the common mananchi fits perfectly well. Uh, the common mananchi is able to live up to the standards of of living and uh, survive uh, in this country because when we increase our taxes i remember we've seen the recent uh, increase in prices of uh, fuel um, which is bad for the country mm -hmm. and i think the government should come up with a trajectory that is fit for mwananchi not just the the the, the 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 people in the in the political class Good for the mwananchi. But, but, but then, for, for especially for the youth, taxes reduce or increase? How will we be able to come out of the financial crisis, of the economic crisis that we are at? I, I, I don't believe that increasing taxes will help help okay. will help the country because if we increase the the the, the country and already forty eight percent of the budget mm. of the money that mm. is given out of the taxes already is expended to paying debts, I think we are going nowhere. All right. Okay. Just in 30 seconds. Okay. We are, we are an overly consumer economy. Mm. And in a consumer economy, you cannot develop a consumer economy through capital expensive invest, ex extensive investment like we are doing in Kenya. That's where the problem starts from. Taxation is no problem. If I earn sufficient money, that's why in Europe there are people who are taxed 45%, 50%. And they don't complain and they have no problem because they have raised the minimum wage bill. More money in more pockets creates a higher tax base. Right. The problem we have in Kenya is that the over-concentration of wealth. My mother never went to school, but she will tell you that if you took one billion and gave one man to invest, and you took one billion and shared um, one million among us to one thousand, there's a higher possibility of you recovering your money as opposed to concentrating it. That's how we operate as a country. We take money, we concentrate in one corner, such that if something happens, one thousand people will die. So we need to raise to a point as a country where we mm -hmm. focus more on production. Mm -hmm. Even when we are doing budgeting, you look at our budget, it's more expenditure based. We need to look more on production, increase our levels of production, so that by the time we are taxing people, we are taxing people who have sufficient income. And All you right. create an environment where people can thrive because lastly i want to say something we are in a country where there is desperation and that's why taxes can only increase today in kenya 
cultivating Irish potatoes is like planting bang mm -hmm. because you need a license and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just a level of desperation. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we need to re-engineer our thinking, re-engineer our economic models so that we start be doing economic planning all as right. opposed to political planning. Thank you very much. Uh, that is uh, Kennedy Odweyo and uh, Kirago Muruthi. Uh, very interesting comments what is what is your thought in regards to this let me just sample uh get to see what, what people are saying on social media i want to say thank you so much to louise molly and some good morning watching uh mama mama nancy also there arnold uh, Okunyuk and some good morning all right to five four watching from Naivasha all carrier uh -huh. uh, we have uh, uh, Moses Maina Kelvin Ochuku uh, Magnon Ochwe Oserian two lakes uh, 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 they are in Oserian two lakes uh, uh -huh. we have uh, Racha Jose and some are counting it huh? uh -huh. all right Ken that is and some outer Kitale watching you thank you very much uh, Ken uh -huh. Let me just sample just one more. We have um, this is uh, Slam Enoch. Uh, we have Sam Sam and Dixon Raphael. Thank you very much for wherever, uh, for uh, for watching Wambua and Gotho and uh, finally Mary Mwangi. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your, your your feedback. I'm not able to read all of them, but at the end of the day. It's all about ensuring that the youths participate in the politics of the country. And that's why these particular individuals are here, uh, trying to vie, to vie for parliamentary seats. And I always wish them the best, my brothers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, that brings us to the end of this particular conversation right here on Wine the Morning. Uh, coming up next, I shall uh, be joined by Josiah Musili. He is the Secretary at, uh, of the Directorate of National Cohesion and Values from the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. This particular morning, let's talk about promoting national values. And today, it's understanding values and society. What are values? And by the way, as I said earlier, are national values enshrined in the Constitution? Let's look at that, that break. We'll be back in a bit. This is why in the morning. <laughs>